With temperatures rising back in the triple digits this weekend, it is important to stay safe during the summer heat. Today is National Heat Stroke Prevention Day, so we, can, we need to be prepared and educated to help prevent heat stroke in the future. Joining us is Jessica Mason, MD, an emergency physician at UCSF, Fresno, and CRMC to talk more about heat stroke. Welcome. Thank you. We're so excited that you could join us and talk about this issue. I mean, the Valley, of course, tons of heat during the summer, and heat stroke is a big issue. Can you kind of explain what it is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, heat stroke is exactly what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. It is a stroke, a true stroke caused by heat. Okay. So as it gets really hot outside and the body temperature goes up and up and up, your body's own ability to lower your temperature starts to fail. And once that starts to fail, we see signs of this, and it can progress to something very serious, confusion, seizures, coma, and even death. Wow. Yeah. Who's most vulnerable to this? Anyone can get heat stroke, but there are certain people that we worry about even more. Mm -hmm. So older patients, mm -hmm. young children, anyone with a chronic medical condition, and then there are certain medications that are also going to increase your risk of getting heat stroke. Okay. And then, of course, anyone who's trying to exercise outdoors during the heat or who has to work outside during those peak hours mm -hmm. in the sun. So always good to just check up on anyone that kind of falls under those categories when we get this extreme yes. heat. Oh, one more. Yeah. Anyone who doesn't have access to air conditioning or the ability to cool down and get water. So we see this a lot in people who are homeless and people with substance abuse disorders. It's also, unfortunately, really common in those groups, too. Well, if you're with someone who's kind of showing some of the symptoms of it. What are some of the symptoms that they're going to see that come along with heat stroke? The good thing is that there are a lot of really early symptoms before it becomes a heat stroke. Good. Yeah, so mm -hmm. early on, of course, you're going to feel hot. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel thirsty. There's sweating. Your heart rate will go up. And then you can start feeling nauseous, belly pain, dizzy. Some people are going to pass out. These are all signs that you got to stop and do something to get cool now. So you're going to drink lots of water mm -hmm. and try to get into the air conditioning. Really, just air conditioning and fluids. If you can do those two things, that's going to fix it most of the time. Gotcha. Well, if it progresses to that, where can you go for treatment or what should you look for for treatment? Mm -hmm. Well, if you're ever not sure, Come see us in the emergency department if you're ever worried. But things that you can do before it even gets to that point. We talked about fluids and air conditioning. Mm -hmm. If you see someone who you think needs help, things that you could do to help them are cool ice packs. Put them on the hands, on the feet, the neck. Try to cool them down. Put them in the armpits. And then what we do, actually in the ER, that you could do wherever you are, and it's very effective, is you take a, a cool, wet cloth. We would use like a sheet if we were in the ER. Okay. And you put a wet damp cloth on, on the patient mm -hmm. and then blow a fan over them. Wow. And that's the most effective way to cool people. So that evaporation pulls the heat off of you and helps really cool you down. Wow, that is a good way to do it. Uh, on top of heat stroke, when we have these really hot days, is there anything else that could happen to someone? Uh, the heat exhaustion or something along those yes, lines? Yes, yes. There's, there's a lot of sort of more minor forms of heat illness before we get to heat stroke. Mm -hmm. and like you're saying, heat exhaustion. So what's that? That's basically this big term for any of the heat illnesses that can occur. So you can get um, heat syncope, which is passing out from the heat heat edema, which is swelling. Edema is swelling. Usually we see that in the hands and the feet. There's heat rashes that you can get. And all of these are warning signs that you are not, your body is not able to cool itself down effectively. And if you don't cool yourself down or get help, that's when we worry about heat stroke. Is there a certain uh, temperature or a type of day that can really cause this to happen more often or a certain setup? There's not, actually. It's heat and inability to cool yourself down. So yeah, there's some technical definitions about how hot the body would get, but really mm -hmm. it's anytime it's hot and you don't have access to cool yourself down. That could happen in the 90s, but we start to really worry about it as those temperatures creep up into the triple digits. And we're seeing that this week. Yeah. Do you know maybe a guesstimate of just how many times you have to deal with this during the season? We see it all the time, unfortunately, in the, in the hot months of the summer, we see this all the time. Fortunately, we see a lot of really minor cases, but we also see people who are really, really sick and sometimes um, don't survive from heat stroke. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's a big deal. It's not something to mess with. Like you said, like the second you start seeing those symptoms, you need to start treating it. Yes, and it's no secret. It gets very hot in the yes. valley. So we have to be very aware of this for ourselves, but also the people around us. For people who work in the outdoors, um, be aware of what's going on with your coworkers and check in with them. If you're at home, check in with your neighbors and your friends. And then another service that I wanted to mention that the city of Fresno provides mm -hmm. on days where the forecast is a temperature of 105 degrees or hotter, okay. there are cooling centers. They're usually in community centers, but there's four cooling centers okay. that the city of Fresno provides to, to all the people here who they can actually take a bus for free free to get awesome. to and from the cooling center and cool themselves down. Good. I'm, I'm glad there's resources for that. And thank you so much for joining us and really bringing to light like how you can fight this and get through the heat and not have to deal with this so much because it is avoidable. Yes, avoidable and also very scary. So yeah. thank, thank you. you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us.